Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I agree with Ms. Monomichi. This is uh, something that should be bipartisan. It is, is something uh, definitely uh, concerning to me, and it should be to not only every member of this committee, but Congress and those in the universities. This is a, a uh, meeting of two areas of which I have experience and a great interest of working uh, in intelligence and technology in the Air Force. I was greatly concerned when it was mentioned that Sandia Labs has been a, a target. Uh, working with Cindia Labs in the past, I know the type of research and development they do, and it is definitely of a, a national security concern with me and uh, even with other research institutions that I work with in this capacity uh, and that I have in my 20 years in the IT sector. Um, this, is, this is an area that, that should, should have much more attention than we're giving it right now. Mr. Golden, I I want to congratulate you. There is a waiting list for your book at the Library of Congress, which I am on. So apparently, um, it is it is beginning to grow. Uh, Mr. Hassel, uh, you, as you mentioned, conducted extensive work on the Iranian breach of these uh, institutions and provided the FBI with your findings. Can you walk us through how the Iranians were able to breach these university systems? Sure. So. With, with any phishing attack, it always starts with the lure um, that g is generally email-based, and all of these, all of these attacks were, had email-based lures. Um, so they were sent out to a number of different uh, st uh, students and faculty. Um, some were very targeted, as is referenced in the indictment uh, from a couple weeks ago. Some were more general, sent to a wider range of students and faculty. When you look at those lures, they are incredibly sophisticated. The uh, spelling, grammar, the things that you traditionally look for to identify potentially malicious emails, everything there has been perfect. And one of the, I think, the interesting and notable aspects of them is that they have barely evolved over time. Uh, if you look at a lure from three years ago, um, I, have a lure, I found a lure from three years ago that targeted an American university, and I found another lure targeting an Australian university just three or four months ago. The content of those emails were exactly the same. And I think one of the interesting parts of that is sort of it denotes the probable, probable success rate that the threat actors had with using those lures. So the lures were very sophisticated. They, if you look at the, some of the information that was contained within them, uh, it's clear that they did uh, man, prob probable manual reconnaissance to collect information that is targeted to the university specifically that makes them more persuasive. Uh, from the lures, you go to the, the, uh, the phishing sites themselves. The content of the phishing sites is a near replica of the yeah. legitimate login pages that someone would, would see uh, if, they're, if they're going to the actual site. The URLs uh, were patterned to look extremely similar to the actual login page. And then after someone in, in, enters uh, information into uh, those phishing pages, they would generally be sent off uh, to what we would call a drop email account, which is generally a temporary email account where the compromised credentials are received. Okay. And if we could bring up, I've got a, a couple of slides, screenshots of the landing page. Um, the one on the top is the actual uh, University of Pennsylvania library page. Um, actually, um, the, the top one is the phishing site, uh, I'm correct, and uh, corrected, and at the bottom is the actual this is incredible. I mean, this is this is highly sophisticated. It indicated to me, looking at this, that this is not just a rogue actor. This has state sponsorship. There is a lot of uh, a lot of work gone into this, which, from the uh, technology standpoint or an IT standpoint, uh, you're only going to put this type of effort to go after a highly valued target, and which is is really concerning. And on based your on your experience with this and and uh, the other work that you're doing, how vulnerable are these institutions as compared, let's say, our business community or corporations? Are they more? Are the is academia more uh, vulnerable or less? I think one of the primary vulnerabilities for the academic community is not that. Uh, is, is not that different than, the, than most other industries and most other businesses. I think the, the challenge, uh, as I said in my testimony, is that you have a number of different components that feed into the university network. You have students, you have faculty, and then you have employees. Right. And each of those needs to have awareness and training. And by nature of the academic community, a lot of those members are transient. So the ability to train them and give them a, like, fully, fully, full awareness of 
uh, of the actual risks is much more challenging than some other businesses where most of the employees are sort of centralized and you have a better opportunity to train them. Are they a softer target? And, and a lot of times we look at um, a lot, often more effort is put into going after, well, if you have two targets of, of high value, you're going to put more effort in the softer target than the harder. Are the universities a softer target than, let's say, the corporations because of the, uh, what you just laid out for us? I think that they, uh, they hold, sort of, like, sort of like you mentioned, they hold specific value to the people who are targeting them. So I don't think that they are softer and the technical uh, defenses are that much worse than general businesses. But I think they hold a certain value to the people who are targeting them that is much different than you look at the reasons that general, uh, general businesses are being, are being targeted. Okay. I, I do have several other questions, but I see my time has expired. So... Um, if, if we do a second round or if somebody else yields any, I'll I have a couple other questions for you about that. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.